Uh, hi everyone, my name is Samuel Waltz. Um, I'm a summer fellow here at the BD2K Links DCIC uh, Summer Research Training Program in Biomedical Big Data Science. And this presentation will cover the work which I have done over the course of the summer in a project which I call AE Impute Gene Expression Imputations with the Latent Space of RNA Seq Data from ArcGIS 4. So, as an overview of what I'll be covering, first I'm going to give a brief background on uh, RNA-seq and autoencoders as they pertain to my project. Then I'm going to talk about the applications of AEMP, which are single cell imputation and aligner translation and benchmarking. So RNA sequencing or RNA-seq has, tra uh, has revolutionized transcriptomics by improving efficiency and reducing costs. But to use the RNA-seq data, you have to use alignment methods which uh, convert the raw RNA-seq reads into gene counts data. Now, because many different alignment methods produce drastically different results, this can lead to issues with reproducibility and interpretation of the results. In particular, ArcGIS 4, which is an online resource which allows access to gene counts data, uh, uses the aligners Callisto and STAR in its pipeline. And the data from this resource was used in many of the analyses of this project. More recently, single cell RNA-seq uh, has allowed for research at the single cell level. However, due to the limitations of single cell RNA-seq, uh, there are many dropouts or zero values in the data, which can have negative effects on the amount of biological information which can be extracted from the data and thus pose a problem to single cell RNA-seq. To combat these issues, AE Impute uh, uses an autoencoder. An autoencoder is a uh, machine learning technique which encodes and decodes data into and out of a reduced dimension latent space. And uh, by doing this non-linearly, it uh, can uh, learn the underlying structure of complex data better than linear methods such as PCA. And different applications which autoencoders are used in nowadays are noise reduction, dimensionality reduction, and unsupervised clustering. Now this is a breakdown of the model which AE Impute uses, but before the model actually there is a few pre-processing steps that the gene counts data uh, goes through where it's log transformed, quantile normalized, and rescaled between 0 and 1. And but for the actual model I use the atom optimizer, a .001 learning rate, and the mean squared error loss over 20 epochs of training. Now this is a breakdown of the actual layers of the model. Uh, the encoder and decoder consist of two layers each. All the, la all the layers have are, are dense layers and uh, use a ReLU activation except for the last layer which uses a sigmoid activation. And finally, all dense layers are separated by 10% dropout layers to prevent overfitting. So the first application which AEMQ was tested on was single cell imputations. To do so, the model was first trained on ArcGIS 4's RNA-seq data to learn the underlying structure of the RNA-seq data and inside the latent space of the autoencoder. And then to benchmark the resulting model as for single cell imputation, it was benchmarked against four other existing imputation methods by comparing the amount of biologically meaningful information that their, their imputed data could produce from enrichment analysis using Enricher. Benchmarking was done on 913 single cell samples from ArcGIS 4. For each sample, the top expressed genes were queried in, uh, in Richard's Go Biological Process 2018 library uh, after imputation using AE Impute and the four other existing imputation model uh, methods to obtain a list of significant Go terms for each method. This, these lists served as the measurement of the amount of significant biological data inside the imputed data of each method. Now, as you can see from these, uh, this, the, uh, this figure over here, um, AE Impute returned mostly positive results in increasing the amount of significant biological data. It ranked second in the uh, amount of significant load terms returned from enrichment analysis, only behind MAGIC, which is another an imputation method which is widely used. The second application which AE Impute was tested on was aligner translation and benchmarking. For this part, data uh, uh, samples aligned with Callisto in ArcGIS 4 and also aligned with STAR in another online resource, uh, Recount 2, was used for training and testing. Uh, to, for this part, two, um, two, two AEMQ models were, were trained on, on 10,000 matched samples. The first model was trained to translate uh, samples aligned with Callisto into a predicted star representation, and a second model was trained to translate samples aligned with Callisto into a predicted star representation. 
And then after training, testing was done on 1,000 additional matched samples. So as you can see from these two scatter plots, um, the models were shown to improve the correlation between the two aligners uh, across all 1,000 samples. The left figure shows the Callisto to star translations of the first model, and the right figure shows the star to Callisto translations of the second model. Uh, this, are, this, this is uh, a, uh, individual sample results. Um, as you can see, this is a side-by-side -side comparison of a, a, a sample's normalized gene counts aligned with star on the x-axis and Callisto on the <coughs> y-axis before and after the Callisto alignment was uh, translated into a uh, predicted star representation. And as you can see from these two scatter plots, uh, translation significantly uh, improved the correlation between the two alignment, aligners. This is a similar side-by-side -side comparison, but here the sample's um, Sample star uh, alignment was translated into a predicted Callisto representation, and again, the translation significantly improved the correlation between the two align aligners. So this is a visualization of the distribution of Pearson correlations across all 1,000 samples after both the Callisto to star translations, which is on the left, and the star to Callisto translations, which is on the right over here. Uh, finally, while slight, it does appear that star uh, data, uh, data aligned with star can be translated into a Callisto representation better than the other way around. This may indicate a level of superiority with the star um, that, uh, aligner as it comes to the amount of information stored in the data which is aligned by it. So in summary, AEMQ, the project which I worked on over the summer, has been shown to increase the biological information in single cell RNA data and may also be able to serve as a translation method between uh, two aligners and may serve as a benchmark between them. Uh, future work in this project may be to improve the model to, let's say, enable uh, cell type predictions based on single cell RNA seq data. And then another interesting route for this project would be to investigate the latent space and visualize it to look at p p potential relationships and patterns between different samples. And then extending this, one can search for samples similar to like a queried sample uh, based on like similarity tests such as cosine similarity to um, ba on, based on like the representation of, e of the samples in the latent space. Thank you to Dr. Mayan and the Mayan Lab for all their help and all the learning, I ca uh, the, uh, the learning opportunities over the course of the summer. Thank you to Professor Alex Lockman for guiding me through this project. And thank you to all my fellow summer fellows for, uh, <laughs> for, for, for everything I learned from them over the summer. <laughs>